I'd like to welcome you to our broadcast today. If you've got a Bible, turn with me to the book of Galatians. Get yourself a cup of coffee and let's have church. The Galatians had somebody, the Bible's not clear who was doing this, that had came into their assembly and seen that they were had this liberty. They were not following circumcision laws. They were not following uh, laws that pertain to what day they went to church. They were not following any of the biblical laws. And what happened is they were overtaken and overcame by somebody that had came into their fellowship and basically said, you need to start following these laws to be justified in the eyes of God. This is exactly what we have in the churches today. It is no different. The churches today, most of them believe that you're justified by works and not faith in Jesus Christ. And I can prove this to you. Every denomination, uh, irregardless of which one it is, they have extra biblical laws that the Bible has not clearly defined that makes you justified in the eyes of God. There is no justification in the eyes of God outside of Jesus Christ. There is none. You can have all kinds of rules and regulations made up to yourself. You can go back to the Hebrew Roots Movement. I know this will offend people that I personally even know. And the reality is you will not be justified in the eyes of God. You can follow every single law that is in the Bible and not be justified in, by the, in the eyes of God. You can observe the Sabbath. You can have the food laws. You can observe all the laws that were written and you will not be justified in the eyes of God. This is the sin that Cain had. Cain wanted to be justified in the eyes of God based on works, not what Jesus Christ had done on the cross. So what did Cain do? Cain goes out and works. Think about what he does. By the sweat of his brow, he goes up out into the earth, plants these crops, brings the first fruit of his crops. You know, any of you that is a farm know that's a lot of work. And he did all this work and brought it to God, and God said, I don't accept this. That is exactly what is going to happen to some of the brethren in the church as I speak to you right now, some of you that are going to watch this message will not enter the kingdom of heaven because you are justified by touch not, taste not, handle not, and that there is no scripture to support that at all. That is Judaism. Judaism was passed down to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church then decided to, to, to preach that to all of the people and if you didn't follow their rules and regulations for a period of time you were murdered then when the protestants came along they started the protestant reformation which a lot of people are really interested in and think that was one of the greatest things of all time and i would say it had some good things that came out of it but they still did not do away with being justified by the law they still had their ordinances and their rules and their regulations that made you holy in the eyes of God. None of this is from God. Not, not one bit of it is from God. Let's look here and start at Galatians 1 and 6. And most of you will know this already. Very few preachers are willing to preach out of the book of Galatians. They believe their church is going to somehow lose control. Listen to what he says in 6 1 here. I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who has called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. And he goes, it's not another. It's not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. You will find this in the, throughout your whole life. People will be trying to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we have said before, and now say I again, if anyone preaches to you another gospel, then what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. I have followed, the, I had problems with this my entire 22 years uh, ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is where you will wrestle trying to please men. Because if you want to be in a bunch of different churches to preach, and you want to, or you want a pastor, you will obey their laws, rules, and regulations that they have made up, not what Jesus Christ taught. And this gives a false image, which is a totally another gospel, uh, excuse me, another message, where we will just sit down and discuss about the, Im the corruption of the image of God, but that will be a further message. But I will make known to you, Paul continues here, brethren, that the gospel which preached by me is not according to man. So Paul is explaining to these Galatians, I did not receive this revelation from a man. 
I received this from Jesus Christ himself. For you have heard of my formal conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism. That's what he said. I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being much more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. That's what we have today. We have a lot of churches that are zealous for the traditions of their fathers. Man-made laws, man-made rules, man-made ordinances, man-made gatherings, all man-made. has nothing to do with Jesus Christ and him being crucified. It is amazing to me that we will not observe the Lord's Supper, which was completely commanded in the Bible, but we make a huge deal out of all other holidays. Uh, Christmas and other holidays that have far less meaning than what Jesus commanded. We establish we are just exactly living in the days of Noah. What they do in the days of Noah, they did what was right in their own eyes. That's exactly what we do. We do what is right in our own eyes and not right in the eyes of Jesus Christ. Paul goes on to say in Galatians 2 and 1 that after 14 years, I went up to Jerusalem, this is after his conversion, with Barnabas and took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to the, them that gospel, which I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those who have a reputation, at least by any means I might run or had run in vain. Even Paul was afraid of them here. He was afraid that I'm going to go in to these Christians that were previously Jews and uh, uh, this is going to cause so many problems that I'm going to have to do this uh, in a, a stealthier manner. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, now remember Titus is a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Titus himself, and you will know this about people that's not been raised in a traditional church. I learned this early on in my walk with God. I was trying to impose church rules and regulations upon people who had not been raised in certain denominations or raised in church at all and said to themselves, I don't understand why you believe this is a sin. Then they would say, why, where is this in the scripture? Where is this? And then you could not produce where this was in the scripture legitimately. You could take something out of context. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spare their liberty, spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. You are not submit to these false doctrines. You're not to submit to them. You're not to observe uh, uh, wicked things, uh, such as Lent, for example. Not one word of that in the Bible. As a matter of fact, it's of the occult. Uh, Christmas trees and all this other stuff, which I'm not going to get into legalism here, whether you should have a Christmas tree or not. That's between you and God. What I'm trying to explain to you is that, that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Santa Claus has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Having Easter eggs at your church has nothing to do with uh, Jesus Christ. Weeping for Tammuz, which is what 40 days of Lent is, is a demonic, occultic doctrine. Yet you will not follow the doctrines that Jesus has plainly laid out in his scripture. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, continuing Galatians 2 and 11, now when Peter had came to, come to Antioch, it stood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James who would eat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. That's exactly what we do. We play the hypocrite, and the very next scripture says that. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. Have you ever noticed that? Your next door neighbor is having a cookout and he invites you over. Now you know that he's probably going to be drinking a beer over there or something like this, but he's invited you to dinner. Now Jesus would have went, but you won't go because you're a Pharisee. You know what's sin and what's not sin. What I'm saying is, is your neighbors invited you to come over and enjoy a meal with him, and you're too big of a Pharisee to do what Jesus Christ did, and that is to go to that man's house and enjoy dinner with him. He knows that you're a Christian. He knows that. Don't you know that he may want to talk to you about Jesus Christ? 
There's a time for you to go and there's a time for you to leave. If it starts getting late and they start getting rowdy and start partying too much and stuff, you excuse yourself and go away. But that when you're invited to these places, you are to go and you are also to eat what is set before you as Jesus plainly said. We are so religious. I, I like these religious people who show up. Now, if you've got food health issues and you have to can only eat certain foods or you're doing this for a health reason, that has it's totally different than being a Pharisee. But when you go to somebody's house and they sit down at ham to eat and you say, oh, I can't eat ham or I can't eat uh, meat on Fridays. Where, where's that at in the scripture? That's not in scripture. That is false doctrine. You're making yourself a Pharisee. That's why nobody is getting saved around you. Nobody wants to know Jesus Christ. And we're going to be accountable because everywhere Jesus went, the sinners collected around him. But everywhere we go, they hate us. That's something for us to consider. Why is it today that everybody loves Jesus, but they hate his representatives? Why? Because we don't represent Jesus Christ. That is the reality. We do not represent Jesus Christ. We are hypocrites. Now let's move on to Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ, not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Not faith in your works, not faith in whether you cut your hair, not faith in whether you wear makeup, not faith whether you go to the moon, Movies, not faith where do you go to worldly gatherings, quote, not faith where do you go to amusement park, not faith in whether you wear shorts or not, what type of shirt you wear, what kind of jewelry you have on, whether you wear a hat, whether you shave your face or whether you don't shave your face. Doesn't matter how long your hair is, if your hair is cut, if it's not cut. Doesn't matter if you wear earrings, Does none of this stuff matters to Jesus Christ. You are taking the blood of Jesus Christ and treading it under your feet and Jesus is is not happy with this action. He is not happy. I'm warning you right now, if you believe you are justified by the works of the law, my friends, you will perish in eternity in the flaming side of hell. That truly is scary, but that is plainly what is written. You are only saved because of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. You are not saved by works of the flesh, works of your hands. You are, that does not save you. That will not perfect you, and that will not sanctify you. Listen to what Paul says here. Paul says in 2.16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ, not by the works of the law, for for the works of the law no flesh shall be justified. It's hilarious that we are justifying ourselves based on laws that's not even in the scriptures. There's 613 laws, yet we have many other laws that we add to that and believe we're justified. That's what the Pharisees did. The Pharisees did the exact same thing. If you go to 2.19, Paul said, For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ has died in vain. In Galatians 3.1, Paul says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect in the flesh? A lot of people wonder how they can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they believe they're going to receive it based on their own personal righteousness and they never receive it. 
The Holy Spirit is a free gift of God. You cannot earn that. You cannot do anything to deserve that. Your righteousness is a filthy rags. Anything you do, and when you live in this manner, becomes wicked to God. There's nothing you can do to justify what Jesus has done for you on the cross. And Paul even says here, he says, Are you so foolish in 3.3, you having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law, by hearing of the faith? That's why the church has no miracles. It's because we believe it's by works of the law. I've even had people say this. I only let people pray for me when I know how they're living. You are joking me. You do not know the internal workings of a man or woman's heart. You have no clue of this. I have seen people that have lived deceptive lives for years. You would have thought they were the holiest people on planet Earth, and down inside they were a devil. You will see this throughout all your life. Listen to what Paul goes on further here in 310 says, For as many as are as are of the works of the law or under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. If you go to 328, it says then, Then there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you're a Christ, then you're Abram's seed and an heirs according to the promise. <laughs> if you go down to Galatians 4 and 9, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is that you turn again to weak and beggarly elements which you desire again to be in bondage? Now let's look at some weak and beggarly elements here uh, that they observe. He says that you observe days, months, seasons, and years. And the Galatians get mad at him because he is explaining to them the true gospel. And Paul says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you that you may be jealous for them. Listen to what Paul says here. You ever notice this? How many of you out here watching have been to church and felt totally rejected? Listen to what they're doing here. This is a mind manipulation. This is a part of occultism. They court you, but for no good. So in other words, you ever notice they're always trying to get you to come unto their fellowship. They're always trying to pull you into their denomination. But they do this for no good, Paul says. And yes, then they'll exclude you. Notice that. That if you don't line up with what they believe is true, they'll exclude you that you may be zealous for them. When you, and this is something you will learn in sales class. It's called taking it away. Uh, oh, well, then you don't get it then. Then you don't need it then you don't want it. And what happens inside of a person is they're like, now wait a minute here. He, I want to make the decision. This person is manipulating you. The devil is manipulating you and excluding you out of their fellowship because they want you to be zealous for them. Well, man, they've got their own little private clique over here. And man, I, I, I don't want to be excluded from the clique. And you will notice if you do not believe to obey and observe their laws, their times, their seasons, their days, their rituals, their forms, their dress codes, uh, how you should have church, where you should have church, uh, what day of the week that you have church, all these different things, you will find out you will be excluded and that exclusion to them becomes their own personal clique but in return it makes you desire some people 
to want to be part of their fellowship. So you will line up and start observing days, times, months, years, and all these other crazy things in order to please them. Paul explains to you here, it's all, all clearly lined out in the book of Galatians. Paul goes on here to tell them in 421, he says, Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one a bondwoman, the other a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he who was of the free woman through the promise, which things are symbolic. For there are two covenants, the one on Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage. Where was Mount Sinai? We know that Mount Sinai, according to the word of God, was in Saudi Arabia, and we also know that that brought them 613 laws. Uh, we uh, go by the 10, but there's actually 613 laws that was gave there, and it was to bring you into bondage. Paul says it was to bring you to the knowledge that you can do nothing to save yourself. Absolutely nothing. He goes on to say here, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. Above. We are born above, not below. We are not the sons of Cain who want to reach God through the works of our hands. We're the sons of the living God who can do nothing to earn the love of Christ. Christ loved you before you were even saved. He loved you before you ever repented. He loves you right now in your sin. He loves you. He loves you. He's made a way of escape. Brethren, I beg you to understand what I am telling you. You are justified in God's eyes by what Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary. His blood was the sacrifice that was sprinkled over the Ark of the Covenant, the end of all sacrifices. And if you will just believe that he made this sacrifice for you, he will save you. He will deliver you from this present evil and cursed world. Now look at Galatians 4.29. But he, as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even is it so now. My brethren, if you walk according to the Spirit, you will be persecuted by your brethren around you. Listen to what Jesus says. They hated me. They will hate you also. When you are going to the church and the church world and all the religious people love you and love how you obey their ordinances they will love you but when you move against this and say no I am saved by what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me you will be persecuted you will be rejected you will be removed from their fellowships you will be removed out of their church services you will not be invited to their Bible studies you will not be invited to dinner with them because why they are separating themselves from you because they believe and they will sow discord and they will uh, uh, say, uh, post stuff on you. They will do all kinds of wicked things against you because they themselves are wicked. Not that you're wicked. They are wicked. Jesus loved the sinner. And if you do not, and then they say you should hate the sin, all of you have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And most of you that are even in the church, his heart is full of worse sins than the world is. Think about what I'm telling you. Jesus never had an evil word to say about the woman in adultery or the woman at the well or other people that was overtaken in sins and the devil had destroyed their lives. But he did spend a lot of time hammering the Pharisees. Something we need to consider. Are you a Pharisee? Nevertheless, in 430, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And listen to what Paul says. I'll close with this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law, not part of the law. 
You have to keep all 613 laws, not what you make up, not what you think should be a law. You have to keep them all, and if you break one of them any time in your life, then you're doomed to hell. And it is clearly written in the scriptures that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have become estranged from Christ, Paul says. You who attempt to be justified by, by law, you have fallen from grace. And I'll preach about backsliding one time. You can backslide, but I'm not going to cover this today. And how do you backslide? By this. You've fallen from grace. You become justified by the works of your own hands. Then you have fallen from grace, my brethren. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. 5.11 in Galatians says, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. That's why we love laws. That's why we love them. What does Paul say here? Why do I suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross ceases. That's what it is. It's the offense of the cross that somebody actually paid the price for you that you would be redeemed back to God, that, that it's offended to you, that's offensive to you. You want to somehow earn your way into heaven and to stand before God and say unto him, look at all these good things I have did. In your name I casted out demons. In your name I did this. In your name I did that. And Jesus would say, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. What, what, you, what? He was talking to a person that was a fornicator, an adulterer, a murderer. A th no, he was talking to a religious man who had established his righteousness based on the works of his own hands and not what Jesus Christ had freely gave him on the cross of Calvary. Galatians 5.14 says, For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by another. Thorns and briars that religious people have hanging out off of themselves and everywhere they go, they're cutting and making everyone around them bleed, wreaking havoc in their entire lives. And that'll be another sermon. Brethren, I love you. This is the Sermonator signing off. I beg you to study the book of Galatians and see if what I'm teaching you is not the word of God. I seek no praise from man, but I do seek to please my Father in heaven because I love him. So I hope you got something out of this. I love you. Until next time, be blessed in the name of the Lord.